Hello everybody, this is Darshini and uh, we're going to be covering quite a bit of uh, information regarding solar physics, solar storms and um, essentially solar weather that's going to affect us, so sunspots and uh, CMEs which I'll explain in a minute. So before we go into that on the predictions, I'd like to uh, actually share with you um, some information, uh, just basic information. Very briefly I'm going to go over this and um, more will be in the book but really it's to do with just basic information regarding the sun and activity. So uh, I don't know if anybody out there has been seeing more auroras and in places that you normally wouldn't over the last few years and I'll explain why that I think there there are more auroras being experienced okay so we're going back into basic um, information here and uh, just to let you know uh, the scientists believe that the sun is about four billion years old so that's four billion years um, old and it's about um, 93 million miles away from earth uh, so therefore um, obviously that's quite a bit of um, distance and um, we're going to go over how they're actually measuring and have got certain bits of information where they're able to see sunspots and solar activity in the sun and this was developed in the last few years I believe but, but please check your facts okay um, check my facts um, please go ahead and that would be called um, this um, sound wave technology where they feel that the the sun um, by reviewing 10 million um, in frequency sound waves in the sun is called that um, science method is called helio um, seismology so they're actually recording sound waves and sound frequency and that's how they've been able to tell quite a bit about the sun um, and we're going to go over some basic facts again as I said it's um, estimated to be about 4 billion years old um, and it is 93 million miles away and um, through um, through the Helios um, Helio seismology they've been able to um, ascertain these facts but a few other things so um, as you see uh, just directly beneath the top layer um, of the Sun which is in perpetual motion by the way which is constant changing energy um, directly between below that is um, a layer what um, that they call uh, ooh, and they call it kind of the top zone and before the core it's so it's between the core and um, an, a level from here's the surface the core and this level and that is a zone there and um, where I don't believe that I haven't got the name so I apologize I'm not a science teacher here and um, at the center um, of the core they feel uh, they believe is about 25 times the diameter of the earth um, now they really feel that the core is full of plasma and um, I won't get into the science of that one, but uh, through the sound wave te technology, which is a helio um, seismology, they've been able to ascertain these facts. Um, so um, here we go, going on a bit, a bit more information here. The center consists of a gaseous plasma, and you know, obviously the temperature is just um, incredibly, incredibly high and it's about 15 million degrees inside the actual uh, core and a it's about three and a half million degrees um, hot uh, um, hot even though it's 50 million in the gaseous plasma section the th it's three and a half million degrees um, within the corona of the sun so I apologize a bit of mix up there um, because of this incredible heat, it can generate a CME, which we're going to be covering later and is uh, actually associated with the solar storms. CME means coronal mass ejection, which I'll talk about in, uh, as, a bit later in the video. Okay, And this is what gives really um, 
the energy transmuting from the core is generated throughout several layers to the surface and gives the actual uh, CME the force that it needs to be generated and it pushes out and towards space and sometimes unfortunately to us and um, and gives that in actual um, implosion energy so um, all right I'm just going over some notes that I made I apologize uh, it is basically an atomic process um, that we uh, see from the core through to the surface of the sun uh, where the electrons um, and the protons that it creates creates the plasma and via, via nuclear fusion so it's like um, a hydrogen bomb quite frankly but um, at I don't know how many levels uh, it's, it's estimated at 10 billion hydrogen hydrogen bombs being created every single second um, and that's how much energy there is there at the core and uh, this releases the protons which are generated again every second um, and converts and gen generates 4 million tons of mass into energy all right that's just facts and this again uh, just to let you know all this information is on a nova um, incredibly great um, documentary that they covered on the sun okay if you'd like to go check that out so um, pressure from the core and you're wondering how um, if with this all kinds of hydrogen energy um, and this incredible uh, mass energy how is it why is it um, that the Sun hasn't exploded and just basically very basically um, the pressure from um, inside the actual core inside the car core obviously is explosive and explosive means being sent out so with that um, you're wondering why doesn't it explode out and disintegrate you have to consider that the pressure of gravity on the surface of the Sun actually contains and is a containment field and actually with uh, holds in the energy and that's why it's able to contain um, all the energy in the core and not explode out and disintegrate the planet and Earth okay um, there is um, a zone called the radiated zone from the core and again this is where um, the actual as I said this is the core and there is a section from where the core is to the surface say this is the actual section core here section here and that is called the radiated zone at least this is what the scientists are calling it and it is full of protons which have been created from the plasma within the actual core and what it does it's just it's called it's kind of weird and it's quite a funny how it's uh, um, actually creates a random walk so it doesn't go straight through to the surface and gives you energy we wouldn't survive and nor would the planet so what happens is it's taken it takes an incredible amount of time from where it's created uh, from the um, the actual electrons to protons and um, they actually uh, come out of the core and they literally bounce off randomly and hit other protons and absorb or move on but literally walk uh, from proton to proton through that layer which um, actually gets lighter so it's pretty dense here obviously and as it progresses to the top layer of the Sun it actually gets even lighter so it moves faster obviously towards the end so it literally does a walk like this and it could take it takes years uh, thousands of years and I'll go over the time in a minute but basically it mo does a random walk and this is the through the random zone to whoops um, to the surface of the Sun and um, it is um, this what they estimate is from here to here is about the walk they say is 186,000 miles and it does it per second so it's quite it's the pro protons that do this and it takes about um, what they think a hundred thousand years through to make it from through the core to the zone 
So essentially what they're saying is actually that um, a, it takes, and I'm going over a few other facts here. Um, sorry, I apologize. <laughs> I'm trying to get you some more information there. Um, it takes usually from this, from here again, um, light that was a proton that was generated from the core here which goes through on its random walk from the random zone to the surface and then gets emitted you know several obviously light waves it it actually hits out and gets to earth so from here to there from the core to where it's created to the light hitting the earth okay it actually takes eight minutes from the light being generated from the surface to to us here on Earth, eight minutes. However, it actually takes, um, as I said, over a hundred thousand years um, to actually go from the start to the finish. And they predict that something that is hitting our um, the light now uh, that we're receiving from the sun actually was created in the last ice age. That's how far back. So. Um, obviously we've been um, evol evolving through the sun and so has the sun been evolving as well and we're intermixed so um, on the surface we here see and we, we know obviously I don't have any live video because I don't want to take advantage here but basically you're going to see all kinds of swirls like that on a live video but you'll see that there are tornadoes that are hundred miles high and this is energy, uh, what they call giant tornadoes, or CMEs, which are actually um, coronal mass ejections. And um, that happens, these are sunspots, okay, which is another thing we're going to be talking about. But a coronal mass ejection is when you get a literally a loop of, and literally a loop, um, that is uh, of an ejection of... Uh, of the energy and it loops it doesn't just go straight out it spikes it actually loops and that's when a it crosses literally crosses and where the positive and the um, negative um, ends cross where there's a positive it loops and goes to the negative or whatever, vice versa but if in the, if, because it contorts it can cross and when it crosses it actually cuts it off and it goes into a kind of cone even though it's a loop and it gets directed out towards uh, wherever the direction it's being sent to and of course it's being um, held by the energy of the Sun so it's being pushed by a massive force so what we are seeing and what a lot of people are uh, fearing at least the weather forecasters are fearing is that the future um, it could have an effect on uh, on all the electrical um, in our own planet and where there is we are actually uh, we have our own electrical magnetic field um, and so does the sun by the way but the uh, magnetic field that surrounds us is what protects us from the sun at the moment okay um, so uh, the magnetic um, field in the, on 